Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So today we have a MODOK discard deck. And I know I've covered MODOK a couple of times, and a lot of people write off discard in general, but with MODOK, it has increased the consistency. If you'll notice in this one, it is just a straightforward discard. There's no kind of gimmicks, no kind of like weird text or anything that is useful sometimes, but other times might be a detriment to have in your hand. It is just a straightforward discard deck. There's no lockjaw to kind of give your enablers. It is just a very straightforward discard approach. Now, you'll notice that this has Moon Knight, Swordmaster, Hellcow. Those three cards are probably the least three used cards in the deck. They're not there to be used every single game, but there are some times where you just don't have a better choice, a better option. And so if you don't have your Modoc, if you don't have your Dracula, then you can throw those and not have to worry as much about what they hit. But if you have either of those two, if you have Dracula and Modoc, I'm not going to be risking discarding those if I can help it and if I just don't absolutely need the power. But they're there on those games where you just need an extra burst, where you know you're not going to be able to keep up or keep pace if you don't play those and get a high roll. And so sometimes they can be your enablers that you can throw every once in a while to kind of hit a higher high roll than you normally would. But even just discarding Apocalypse two to three times is generally going to be enough to really hold your own in whatever lane he's either discarded or played into. And so overall, very straightforward MODOK list with Thanos kind of dropping out of the meta a little bit. We see a lot less leech. There are a few decks that this still doesn't always go toe to toe with Galactus being one of them. But a lot of times you can still find a way to hold your own against the Galactus list if you're playing heads up. And if not, you can retreat for one or two cubes. Not a huge loss. In my extended testing of about 35, 40 games, I maintained a 62% win rate, which for discard is insane. In, in, it's incredible. Um, in the, my recording testing, I only lost one of the games while we sat down for a recording session. But overall, fantastic list. I know that discard doesn't always get the love that it deserves, but I think MODOK really helped that consistency, but it got overshadowed by how much we were seeing Leech. And so if you want to see this deck or any of our other decks live, make sure to be following us on twitch.tv slash snap. That's where I'm going live every single weekday, unless something out of the blue pops up and I can't, but we have been very consistent the last three or four weeks about going live Monday through Friday. And so if you want to see any more live form content, definitely be following us over there. Otherwise, with the brief deck explanation out of the way, we're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right. First up, we have Deadwood. Um, the first location is Wakanda. I'm going to go ahead and throw our sunspot there. Um, that way, even if they do have a Killmonger or anything else that's just going to be detrimental, it's fine. Uh, sunspot is one of the biggest enablers for our discard list because he because we're going to be floating quite a bit of energy in most scenarios. Um, whenever we just have kind of awkward curve lines as we're waiting for some of our key resources, which we have the Swarm and the Apocalypse, both beautiful. We're going to be able to really flood the Nexus location. I'm going to do Lady Sif into mid. And then we'll see. Um, so that's going to hit our Apocalypse. We do have Hellcow, um, but, the, but the last time I ran Hellcow, it, it was a one out of six shot of discarding our Modoc, and it absolutely just smashed it. Uh, the one out of six low roll is unfortunate. So we're going to go with the guaranteed calling wing trigger here. And I don't necessarily want to play into the Nexus because if next turn we end up doing um, Modoc, I'd rather Modoc be there. And then we could do a Swarm and like our Chavez. We want to leave some of that space open. So I'm going to go ahead and snap. We have the free Swarms that'll come down. We're going to have four of them. So even if they win the Nexus by like one or by two, by being able to push power into the left and right lane, is really, really impactful, really impressive that a lot of times you might not think that you're going to lose the game because you're going to win Nexus and then we can sneak out the other two lanes anyways. So the Moon Girl comes down, which is uh, definitely scary. That looks like probably a Hawk deck, um, maybe a Devil Dino and then a Mystique. They, they have a couple of plays that could be very, very scary. Now, we do not have our Dracula, so we're going to have to play Apocalypse naturally outright onto the board so we're not going to get that extra four power discard uh, but it's still 16 power it's still a really big enabler they do have the devil dino that comes down oof um so the devil dino they have a second one that they can play um i assume that they have a second one that they can play which would be 30 total power in this lane 
We're gonna have the 16. We're gonna be able to outshine them just a bit. I think we play, right now we have nine, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine power in this lane. They have two, they have eight. So I almost think we, oh my gosh, if they have a Hawk, if they have a Hawk and a Mystique, we don't want to play in Vibranium Mines because Hawk right now is eight. If we played over there, we'd be just absolutely exploding it. So I'm not going to play in Vibranium Mines. I would like the chance to kind of help swing that one. So this all comes down to winning the Nexus lane now. If we lose the Nexus, then we lose Vibranium Mines because we can't really play over there without risk or fear of the Hawk coming down. So I'm going to play in the left and mid. Not the best. Okay, so it is the Hawk. And then the Cosmo. Wow. Um, and so we do get the read correct. Thank gosh I, uh, I decided to hold back our swarms. I was going to throw all three of the swarms over into Vibranium Mines um, because that's going to be the best power spread that we could possibly do. But we do end up getting the four cubes. Let's go ahead and take it and jump over into the next one. All right, so next up we have Brew. And uh, right off the bat, it looks pretty solid. I... If we had any of our like solid discard cards or things that really benefited from being discarded, then we'd probably lean a little bit he more heavily into it. We also don't know what they're running, so they could be running a Shuri deck. And Shuri getting a double trigger plus a Taskmaster, even with our best high roll, I don't know that we beat it. And so we're going to play a little bit more cautiously than we would normally play it. So their Iceman hits our Dracula twice. I, I'm lucky, we're glad that it didn't hit our MODOK. Uh, MODOK would have been very, very bad for it to hit. Um, Dracula is kind of okay. More or less, I guess. We could do a double Moon Knight discard. We probably get rid of MODOK. Uh, actually, I'm okay with this. We don't necessarily get a lot of benefit from doing Dracula on the last turn. If that one gets discarded, we're okay with it. If Hellcow gets discarded, as long as we have Modok, we're fine. If Modok gets discarded, as long as Hellcow is still here, we're okay as well. So I'm okay doing the double Moon Knight to get rid of the opponent's cards in their hand. So the Zabu comes down. They have two cards, the Hellcow. If we hit both Hellcow and Modok here, quit. <laughs> okay. And then the Dracula, they lost their Destroyer as well. So it's a some kind of zoo deck, it looks like. They, left, they lost Kazar and they lost Destroyer. We now have our Swarm, which would have been a good target last turn. That's okay. Our double Modok will come down next turn, and we're going to get three free Swarms that we can play on the board. So the Dracula, the Zero, this does look like a... I can't believe we missed both of those, uh, but this does look like a pretty standard Khazar Zoo deck. Uh, Morbius is going to get buffed up pretty large here. We have the Apocalypse to use on last turn. That's going to be a 16 power play, and... Uh, our Morbius, our Modok at eight powers, no small feat. They lost their Destroyer, so they could have Infinite, they could have a Red Skull, but that is the most that we could expect in Kamar Taj. And so we're going to double discard here. Start buffing up our Morbius. He gets decently large. The second one will trigger, and uh, he's a force to be reckoned with in mid. And now we have the 16 power Apocalypse. The free swarms. Ooh, so they zero out the Red Skull. Interesting choice. Knowing that Dracula is going to absorb into something over there. Very bold. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to we're going to avoid that lane. We're going to fill up the right lane. We're going to add mid with some swarms just in case for some reason they have a Shang-Chi. We were just going to but these two are our win lane. The Red Skull, I think, would have been better here or here, making it uncertain for us what Dracula's power level was going to be in the left lane. But we do get the two cubes uh, by playing aggressively as we led into some of those big power plays. We're going to go ahead and take them. Let's jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Chef Rex. The first location is the Icebox. It hits our Hellcow, so that is no longer going to be something that we aim to use. If we Typically, if we have both Hellcow and Modok in our hand, we prioritize Modok anyways. We typically will skip the Hellcow play. Um, the only time that that becomes effective is behind, like, say, uh, behind the Dark Dimension. If we don't have those key resources in hand, ooh, the stature from the hub is decent value. Uh, they do have Wolverine, so we're looking at a potential Galactus deck. 
the, this list doesn't do phenomenal against Galactus. It, it's not unwinnable, but we just don't have any counterplays to it. Besides like our Moon Knight, and that's a that's a that's a big that's a big praise uh, for us. So the Wolverine, I want to play Dracula, but I'm also a little bit afraid that if we play Dracula here, that's going to pretty much entice them into if they Galactus playing it into Washington D.C. So we're still going to do it. And the second card is stacked in the Wolverine lane. The wave comes down. It's unfortunate. It is. It is unfortunate. We, uh, well, this play is tricky because if they're running a null and we play Modoc outside of here, it's not great for us. If we play Modoc here, it's really tough. The Wolverine tells me it's definitely a Galactus. We're going to Modoc mid. Uh, that'll give us initiative. It doesn't necess not necessarily what we want, because um, if they have a Shang-Chi, then they can counter this. Um, but the Shang-Chi would be three. They would have to lean on a death or another two cost card. Um, Null is not going to be great. Uh, the Wolverine bounces and then bounces. So that buffs up their Null a little bit if that's what they're running. They could also do a destroyer here, but then they wouldn't be able to take out our Apocalypse. And so I don't know. This is a 16 power play. They pretty much have to have Shang-Chi, I think, to be able to overcome our power. Their Null is not strong enough. If they have death and another big card, they could definitely do it. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to try to just sneak in here with a, with a casual 28 power. See if it's enough. Victory. The Galactus got their playoff and was not able to find a way to win. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We will take it. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Jeff. Old Jeff Hoagland. The uh, first location is Kamartaj. So we get some really good value out of our discard cards. I'm not going to play it early. Uh, we don't know what he's running, so it could be a little bit hasty, a little bit greedy if we ended up playing it. Now, we could do Morbius this turn, but I think we're going to kind of veil the fact that we have our discard cards. We're not really going to play our Swordmaster unless we draw something, uh, our Swarm. We're not going to play Calling Wing either. So I think it's okay to hold off on playing our Morbius early. Because as soon as Morbius come to comes down, he knows exactly what deck we're running. And we we don't want him to do that. We do get Swarm. Oh, the, the big brain play turned into low brain play. So we're going to do Morbius in... We're going to do Morbius in the left lane. We're going to do Morbius in the left lane. We have Calling Wing now that we'll get a double discard of our Swarms. Unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunate <laughs> that we went with what I thought was the big brain play and then we hit the one out of seven draw. The wave is awful here. What is this? What is this? Uh, the wave is not great for us. Oh no. Well, the Modoc double discards everything in our hand. So we get rid of our Dracula, our Swarms. We can play for mid potentially or a little bit. Uh, yeah, we're going to do it. It's better than the Calling Wing. It's better than oh, playing the Dracula over into the left lane. Oof. Um, uh, is it? No, Calling Wing would have an equal shot of discarding everything. If we could guarantee that the Swarms would come down, we could use our mana inefficiently here. We could do, uh, make sure that the Dracula stayed in our hand. Next turn, we'll have the free Swarms. We could have made sure that Dracula went into Morag, but it's kind of tough. Uh, as is. Ooh, the Wong. The Wong and the Goose. Um, hmm. I'm curious what, I'm curious what he could be running. I'm going to double discard with Lady Sif. We're going to play one of our swarms over into Morag, just in case there's anything strange that happens that restricts us in the X-Mansion. Um, then we have the free swarm, and then we can just freely play into Morag. We can soak next turn. Um, I think we're okay, just depending on what kind of crazy cheeky combo he has up his sleeve with the Wong play. Um, I'm hoping that it was, oh, the double powered, I don't know. We're going to fill up the rest of the board. We're going to see what kind of big explosive play uh, he has. So, oh, I don't, I don't know what this left lane could be. I have no idea. It could be a, oh my Lord, <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> oh my lord uh we lost all three lanes <laughs> oh no that was uh that was a close game guys very close game we almost had him <laughs> almost had him we'll get him next time
We're gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and tuck tail and run. Let's jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Bobby VX. Um, the TVA is always interesting with the discard deck. So we can we have the potential to kind of cheat out power early with our our swarms, our, our using our Swordmaster or Lady Sif. We get some higher curve, higher power plays on those earlier turns where we can. And so, oh, that is awful. Just awful. What? What an uh, what an awful peak. Um, if we had Dracula, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. If we had Morbius, also beautiful. They It becomes free. Uh, everything else, it was just awful for. So depending on if it helps Bobby or not, could be the difference maker here. We're going to discard our Swarm. Somehow it's still the cheapest card in our hand, but it's going to be a free two power card not a free three power card so ooh, the oh we just oh we just lost to a to a massive wong we're gonna split our power that way we have the lead in the left the mid and the right depending on what he plays here he's gonna have to push power into all of the locations okay so the cosmo comes down we do float in the left lane we swing in the mid oh, wait that was not turn oh my that wasn't the last turn of the game. I thought that was the last turn. It's unfortunate. We're going to play Hellcow to the right. I thought that was the last play of the game. Otherwise, we would have maybe done, uh, I don't know, Lady Sif, potentially. I don't know. We're going to play Hellcow to the right and just hope. We're hoping. <laughs> We're praising. We're going to take our, our awful two cubes. Not a good indicator for the deck. Let's go ahead and try um, a little bit a little bit different of a game. <laughs> Very good game, Bobby. We'll catch you around next time. Let's jump over into the next one. All right. So next up we have Crunch. Kind of. Uh, there's a V in there. Um, the, f Ooh. the first location is Kunlun. So when a card moves here, it gets plus two. The middle location is Asteroid M, which is our new location. It's no longer featured, but it is in the rotation now. And I think it's a pretty interesting one. It's much better than like, you can't play cards here or they explode or, you know, what, what we typically end up uh, usually seeing. And uh, like, Lamentus. You can play around Asteroid. You can't play around Lamentus. It just has a chance to just destroy your hand. And so I'm okay with this location. We'll see how it fares. I think it gives moves, move decks a small, like, secretive buff, depending on how often it pops up. Not a big buff, but like a slight increase in consistency. So storm in the left lane, and then it gets pulled, <laughs> and then it gets pulled into mid. Um, so we do have our Dracula that we could have played on four, but uh, we can't because of Ash. Uh, because, but we can't because of Iceman. It would it get it gets yanked into mid anyways. So actually, more, us playing Morbius in mid was kind of silly, knowing how many three and four cost cards we have in this deck. That was knowing that that was probably going to be the lane where we have a lot of our resources. It's a one out of four. It, it can't happen. We already hit the one out of six today. There's no way that it hits the one out of six and then the one out of four back to back to back. Okay, thank goodness. Uh, the juggernaut in the left lane to move out of the flooded lane and then get yanked into asteroid. So it's such a such a interesting uh, play. I wonder if they have anything that can go wide. If not, we look pretty decent here. Um. They have six cards in hand. We could try to discard one with with Moon Knight. We're just going to go ahead and use our Modok, though. Uh, a Modok will slightly increase our Morbius. We're going to draw Chavez next turn, so we're just going to play Apocalypse onto the board. Ooh, Sarah's interesting. They could... Ooh. And we have initiative, so they could Shang-Chi. This one is now within Shang-Chi range, unfortunately. So if we end up playing Apocalypse there, it's not great. They could Shang-Chi and Mr. Fantastic to reach into the Flooded Lane. We'll see. Uh, we're going to play Apocalypse to the right. There are certain ways that we could lose this one. Dagger and then Heimdall. Oh my gosh. That was awfully close. <laughs> awfully close. We do end up getting the lead. This is a tie though. Uh, after seeing just the Storm Juggernaut Sarah, I didn't put them on a movement deck. And then all of a sudden they... Ruin Dagger um, doesn't seem like one that would be incredibly consistent, but could surprise some four and eight cube games because had they snapped here, I don't know that I would have retreated. We will take the two cubes and that is actually where we're going to end the video. Played a total of seven games. 
we lost the one to uh, to Jeff in a glorious fashion. If we're going to lose, we might as well lose over the top. Otherwise, very straightforward. Without seeing very many leeches, um, Shuri decks, we might have a bit of an issue with with this list. But we could also we could also lean into our high roll. We can spread power pretty wide. We might it might be that you retreat out if you see a Shuri deck. If you don't have like a really good play line, you're able to just push such big power in most scenarios that you can just find ways to win. But before I get on a, a bigger soapbox, we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a comment down below. As always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.